Hello ladies and gentlemen, I got Renat Farrells here and he was an expert in a previous life. Hello Mr. Farrells. Hello too. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here uh, tonight by me. Uh, can you introduce yourself and uh, what you did as an expert, please? Yeah, well, I actually I'm a, an engineer from, from education and with more than 20 years of career in the, in the energy sector. First uh, seven years within the Exxon Group and now uh, in the uh, since since then uh, since 97 I moved on to Electrobel uh, and from then on I moved on in different positions in the NG group so now I'm actually uh, responsible for the investment committee of uh, of the NG of the NG group and uh, what you did as an expert well I was actually an act, an expert um, after my first position in the in SO in SO uh, in Antwerp after being in the in the refinery as an engineer, I was asked to to um, to select a, a place where I could work for a second position in an, in another department and in another country. So they elected me in the framework of a of an early graduate exchange program within Europe, and I could um, so I could I, I elected actually the marketing department and also as my preferred country I elected uh, France. And therefore, my boss immediately told me that it was a good choice because then I would go to uh, Paris. And so uh, I had to present myself to the local organization in Paris. And three weeks after that, I was um, actually working as an expat in that organization. Mm. So it, it moved on very, very quickly. Uh, mm. and, and the reason why that happened is, uh, well, I was, I was young and I was uh, mobile. I had no commitments uh, whatsoever. Mm not married, no children, so yeah. everything was, was very easy to decide, eh? mm -hmm. um, and so on. So, and uh, what was the most important factor that you would go to France and uh, not to another country? Well, one of the, one of the elements was that I, I, I wanted to learn something more about, uh, about marketing, of course, and mm -hmm. also uh, I wanted to, to learn better my, the French language, because as an engineer we, we're not very well trained in languages, and mm -hmm. so for me, it was important to speak French as well, um, and therefore um, that was my big, biggest mo motivation. The learning experience. It was also immediately uh, uh, another uh, some some junior management position I had as a second mm -hmm. uh, a second uh, position in a company like that was very interesting, of mm -hmm. course. And after having worked on uh, engineering stuff, mm -hmm. very very technical, I was looking forward to to step in my first uh, management mm -hmm. experience. Okay. Uh, you told me that you work now for uh, NG. Uh, did uh, the expert experience helps you to get this job? Well, you know, NG Group is a French group, so of course the, the expert uh, job did help me to, yeah. to speak better French <laughs> for sure. Uh, but also to learn to work with, uh, with, other, with other colleagues uh, from another country. Eh? So the, the multicultural cultural aspect that I learned through the expat experience served me very, very well. And uh, based upon that, I, I moved on in other positions and I, I was actually uh, nominated for very challenging positions sometimes based upon the, um, the, the experience that I learned in, uh, in Paris. Yeah. And how was it to work with uh, colleagues from different European countries where there were not uh, culture differences? Or? True, in, in the beginning, and I, I remember I was, uh, I was not so good in the beginning um, so I made a lot of mistakes and I learned a lot from my mistakes and I think that it's important that uh, you allow yourself to, to get acquainted with, this, uh, with the differences that, that we all have amongst ourselves, amongst the colleagues in Europe. Uh, sometimes uh, if you have to work with an Italian guy, he has other interests than, uh, yeah. <laughs> than an English lady or, uh, or even a French, uh, a French uh, employee. Uh, so I had all the different uh, challenges in front of me. And uh, besides that, of course, the, um, the, the topics that I was working on were also very, very different. Yeah. Eh? So it was no longer the technical engineering stuff, it was marketing and it was management and it was leading people and motivating people. And yeah. it was not always obvious, especially when, when you are there uh, in, an, in another language. Uh, yeah, so you have to express yourself yeah. in, with the right tone and with the right words. Uh, it's not always so obvious. And was it always communi communicating in uh, French you did with the other people? Because I can imagine yeah, an Italian boy is not always used to speak French or... 
Well, the Italian guy had to speak French as well. Eh? Uh, I mean, the working language in Paris was French. Okay. Uh, there was no, that was clear. There was no way to speak English or uh, what other languages. You know, the, and so also with the employees that I had to manage, uh, they all, they all yeah. spoke French. Uh, so, so I learned very, very quickly uh, the language. And of course, we had some, some school experience and some school knowledge. Uh, but real life is different, eh? you know, but also in, uh, so once you get um, get to know the people and you need to work with them, uh, you have to use the, the right words and, and the right tone. Eh? Yeah. yeah, and what about the salary? Was it uh, more interesting to work as an expat than to work here as an employee for a company? Or Well, it is, tr it is, it is true uh, what they say is that as an expat you, you, uh, you earn a, a lot more or you earn a, a bit more, and especially in that time, expats within the Exxon Group were very well uh, served. And so, mm -hmm. indeed, I had a housing allowance and a, and a, um, uh, a difference, I mean, the, a premium above my salary to compensate the, the cost of living. Um, and so, based with, with that, I could, uh, I could start my life uh, much easier, of course, yeah. with the money that I could save. Uh, but it is true that, I mean, if you look all along <coughs> your career, uh, after 20 years, you, you start to recognize the important value of the learning experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think the wealth that I have today is, uh, is mainly thanks to the, to the early experiences that I have gained from Exxon and from also Electra Bell and the MG Group. Are there things you still remember that you, yeah, from there, from that period that you use now in the current life, in your current job? Uh, well, what I what I uh, started to to uh, use recently is again the um, the, the whole cycle of um, cost control and uh, operation and stewardship. Uh, you know the number crunching that I used to do at that uh, first job in uh, in in Paris. So and um, even now as a, as a secretary general of the investment committees, I have to review all the business plans. And so there's also a lot of number crunching uh, to be done. Um, I, I guide the people who are working with me together. Uh, most of them are uh, French employees, so yeah. they have their French culture. And so the, the whole expat experience in 93 has served me very, very well, yeah. uh, together along with those, with okay. those, with those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, would you recommend uh, young people to work as an expat now, nowadays? Yeah, of course, of course, even if the conditions have been um, put at normal level. Eh? Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, today you see, uh, especially if you stay within Europe, you are not, um, you're, you don't receive uh, an extraordinary uh, expat package. The, the salary is slightly increased, but it's not so, not so high. But nevertheless, never underestimate the, the learning experience. And, and you will see the value creation along your career all the way after 10 years or after 20 years you will be nominated for uh, high profile positions where multidisciplinarity and uh, multicultural uh, experience is important mm -hmm. uh, especially in today's uh, bigger uh, groups all of them are uh, mm -hmm. all multinationals and they um, they work on very complex and sophisticated uh, systems and would you still recommend France to go as an expert? Because yeah, Europe is quite one, one, whole, uh, one whole thing. Mm -hmm. like, of, would you recommend to go like to Asia or to uh, the United States? Well, it's true that I mean within Europe, it's no longer uh, seen as an expert position. Yeah. Eh? I mean, it's normal today as a young graduate that you have had already uh, some European experience through the um, I mean the schooling uh, system with uh, Erasmus and, and the other programs that mm -hmm. have been launched uh, so now today as a young graduate you need to go to Asia or you yeah. need to go to Latin America uh, those are the regions where um, where you can learn a lot eh? uh, where they give you uh, immediately uh, high responsibilities uh, which you will not get in uh, mature countries like Europe mm -hmm. or North America. Uh, so you have all the interest to, to um, find uh, early, early in your career some positions in Asia, like in China or in uh, India, uh, Thailand as well. Those are very nice countries to learn and also to live. Yeah. Um, I also have colleagues today who are living in, uh, in Chile, okay. in Latin America. Yeah. 
uh, they seem to to get along as well, and, and so they 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 arrive to and they manage to install their family as well, and, and so everywhere around the world you will see that uh, people around you, your your loved ones, like your your wife or your children, can integrate in the local community and can find a home mm -hmm. and, and be happy uh, during yeah. the time that you are there. Eh? As last uh, question, I would ask you, why did you come back to Belgium and did you not uh, choose to work in a, in another country like you did as an expat? Yeah. Was it then there are some factories that you decided from, okay, I move back to Belgium because Maybe the, the way of living there is better than in uh, another country. No, it's, it's true that if you, if you live in another country, you start to recognize the value of, uh, of the Belgian society. Mm -hmm. And so you, you prefer your home country because you know it very well. And, yeah. and so you can uh, develop can other relationships and other projects at home. Um, now, the reason why I moved back to, to Belgium is obviously also because I... I found my love and my luck in uh, in this country, and I still like it very much. Yeah. While other colleagues, uh, they moved on, and they, they had obviously uh, maybe uh, an even higher career as, as I had, uh, because they were more as a global leader, yeah. uh, more globally in the world, moving on from one country to the other. Uh, but uh, the biggest trouble, uh, what I learned from those guys uh, when I talk with them uh, in an informal way, is that these guys, they miss, they miss their home country, mm -hmm. they miss their anchor, um, and so their home society. Uh, so you have to that, find a, a balance between the both. Yeah, it's true to, I mean, you think uh, life is not only your work, yeah? and mm -hmm. so you also want to develop uh, in-depth relationships yeah. with, uh, with family and with friends. I think, uh, therefore, a stable position in a, in a country is important. To, um, to stay close to those, yeah. uh, to those friends. Yeah. Those are beautiful words to uh, end this conversation. Thank you. Mr. Verelza, I would like to thank you to have you here tonight. It was a pleasure for me. And I uh, hope to see you soon back. Thank you too. Bye. Bye-bye.